Um, I believe they never should have had to go through this. Tonight, for the first time, we sit down with the mother of Gabriel Savage. He pleaded no contest to first degree attempted homicide after police found him outside his classmates home with handcuffs, a knife, gun, lots of ammunition. Now, when many of us think of Gabriel Savage, we picture this. But tonight, we look deeper into Savage's childhood. We do this to see where things went wrong. 15 Investigates Elizabeth Wattis has the story you'll only see on 15 News. Happy birthday. Wishing on a birthday candle. You like ice cream? For more family moments yeah. like this. I got a confession made. Or in 10 year old Gabriel's case. I like ice cream. You like ice cream too? Mm -hmm. my confession. Wishing for more of his favorite sweet treat. <laughs> <laughs> the Gabriel I know, he can be funny. Gabriel is Lisa Savage's oldest son. Um, this is a picture of us. Taking a walk down memory lane from her kitchen table. This was his first um, Halloween. Precious. Another one of him as a baby, learning to crawl. But painful. So he had noise sensitivity, didn't like to be startled. He was quick to aggress towards other kids. Gabriel was in kindergarten when Lisa noticed problems starting to surface. One of the last straws was at the school was when he ran out of the school and his elderly kindergarten teacher tried to race after him. And they said, you know, there's nothing else we can do. You need to take him in to be evaluated. Lisa took her son to his primary care doctor and then a specialist who put the kindergartner on two different medications. As the boy grew, the health concerns did too. In his fourth grade year, he said he was having problems with concentrating. Fast forward to middle school. The teen was diagnosed with anxiety and mood disorders. Gabriel hated germs and physical contact. That fear, according to his mom, aggravated by bullying. They would jump up on him and any chance they got. And that's when he distrusted people. About that time, his case manager and I would sit and talk and we're like, okay, we know he's got an anxiety disorder. We know he's got a mood disorder. But there's this big element that's just hindering everything. Lisa and her husband thought that element was autism, a diagnosis that would have given the teen access to more health evaluations and more treatment options for his delusional disorder and anxiety. Lisa says Gabriel's psychiatrist didn't think autism played a part. Years passed, and then when Gabriel turned 15, he threatened to take his own life. Lisa took him to the emergency room, but doctors sent him home. Lisa took her son to the psychiatrist again. And she pipes up and she's like, do you think it might be autism? When she said that um, four years later, I'm like, my, I looked at my husband like, yeah, 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 we think it's autism. Think anything, we need this neurological evaluation to figure out what's going on with my son. A diagnosis wish granted, but granted too late. Wisconsin law says at 14 years old, a teen can refuse mental health treatment. And the now 15-year-old did. It was like, okay, now, now what do we do? It does take time. Mental health experts in the Badger State say early intervention is key. There is some great concern about the status of the mental health of people in Wisconsin. Mary Kay Battaglia is the executive director of NAMI Wisconsin. She says on average, getting the right mental health diagnosis takes up to 10 years, time many sick people don't have to spare. I just encourage everyone, the earlier you seek treatment, the quicker is your time to recovery. And what we find is the quicker you get to recovery, the better the outcome. He said no. And Left with her hands tied by law, Lisa watched as her son struggled. And when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. And I think he suffered some sort of psychotic break um, because all of a sudden he, you know, I think I have prostate cancer. I think I have eye cancer. I think I have skin cancer. And then all of a sudden he goes, you know what, mom? I have Alzheimer's and dementia. Lisa says Gabriel became afraid of technology, thinking radiation from it was making him sick. Her son asked her to cover his TV, gaming system, and microwave with aluminum foil. The delusional teen thought that would protect him. Hey, what's going on, man? Which brings this family to the night police say others needed protection from Gabriel. Gabe, do you have any weapons in the vehicle? Police found the 19-year-old outside his classmate's home, armed with a gun, knife, handcuffs, and lots of ammunition. We would acknowledge receipt of the information. We'd waive reading. He was convicted of attempted first-degree intentional homicide and is now committed to 30 years in a mental health facility. He needs to get help. A decades-long sentence this mom 
actually wished for. It is a big sense of relief knowing that he's he's where he needs to be. But she didn't wish for it in this way. Gabe's been involved with the mental health system since he was six years old. He's 20, he's gonna be 22 this year. There, in my mind's eye, there's no reason why this should have happened. It should have been caught earlier. She says blame should be placed on her son, doctors, the mental health system as a whole. And I actually do put myself in that category too. Um, because I should have fought harder. Um, sorry. But this mom moves forward knowing she now has the time and tools to make new wishes, not only for her son, but for other families wishing for help. You can't give up. Don't You're not going to give up. Oh, no, never. No, he's, he's my little boy. Lisa and her husband want to use their experience to help other families navigate the mental health system. As for Gabriel, Lisa says she talks to him on the phone almost every day and has visited twice so far. In the newsroom, Elizabeth Wattis, WMTV 15 News. Well, if you or someone you know is going through a mental health crisis, there is help 24-7. Just call 988, that number right there on your screen. Now, the story you just saw is part two of 15 Investigate series called Crisis Averted. You can find this story and part one with the patrol officers who responded that day on our website right now.